Hello everybody, uh, this is Todd Clint, and I'm doing a video today on PowerShell, Visual Studio Code, and GitHub. Now, uh, those of you who follow my YouTube channel know that I'm an IT pro, not a developer, and I spend a lot of time in PowerShell. And one of the questions I see come up with my IT pro brethren uh, all the time is what editor they should be using with PowerShell, what do they do with the ISC, all that kind of stuff. The advice I always give them is to use VS Code and to put you know, their, their PowerShell scripts that they're making, put them in some kind of change of management, change control, source control. And for IT pros, that's pretty scary. The VS and VS Code stands for Visual Studio. That's obviously a developer thing. And so I see a lot of folks not doing it because of those perceived hurdles. So this video today, I'm going to take a blank machine, I've got a brand new Windows 10 box here, nothing up my sleeve, I'm not even wearing sleeves, and I'm going to show you how to install Visual Studio Code, hook it up with PowerShell, and then uh, also connect it up to GitHub so that you can put your PowerShell scripts in source control and sync them all over and all that kind of thing. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so let's look at the VM here. This is a brand new Windows 10 box. I have done nothing to this box other than hide the plethora of icons across the bottom for the store and Cortana and a million other things. And I replaced the old visually and morally offensive Microsoft Edge with the new super cool Microsoft Edge just because we're gonna be downloading some things and I can't stand to look at the old Edge even for a second. So that's all that I've done to this machine. No, no tricks at all. So first, let's spend a minute or two talking about why we want to go to all this, this mess. Now, we're still going to take a few minutes, but there is some learning curve to it, and it's a little scary. Um, but this is the reason that I tell IT pros to go their throughout and do this thing. We're used to using the PowerShell ISE, the integrated scripting environment. That still comes with Windows. It comes with Windows 10. It's on Windows Server. It's still there. It still works exactly the same way it did five years ago. Um, but that's the problem. Microsoft has said for a couple of years now that the ISE is deprecated, uh, which means it's going to work exactly the same way in five years as it did five years ago. No new things are going to uh, go into it. And at some point, they could just take it away. And so while it's always there and you can always just fire it up, um, you need to start looking towards the future and, and doing something else. So VS Code is Microsoft's, you know, that's the, the weapon of choice they tell us to use with PowerShell. And I've been using it for a couple of years now. It works really well. It's got some very uh, fancy highlighting. It's got an extension for PowerShell that really helps, you know, it does all the syntax thing and tab completion and all those things in the editor. Way better than the ISE uh, ever did. And then it also has this built-in support for GitHub. Microsoft bought GitHub a couple of years ago, and now you can bolt VS Code right into that. So when you edit your PowerShell in VS Code, you get it exactly the way you want. You can easily push it up to GitHub. And then if you made a mistake, you can roll back a version or you can share it with your friends on GitHub, all those kind of things, all built right in. It's super easy. I've been doing it for a while. Uh, I have every bit of uh, faith that you'll all be able to do it too. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually install VS Code. So let's open up our web browser, already at our favorite website, but let's go to, uh, let's go to our second favorite website. Um, all these links will be in, uh, in the notes. And I also, I'll blog this too. So go to toddclint.com and go to Posh VS C-O-D-E, Posh VS Code, and we'll have all the links and screenshots and all this kind of stuff also. All right, so uh, this is where we download it, code.visualstudio.com. We're gonna download the stable build for Windows. No need to get crazy with any of these dev builds or insider builds. That's not for folks like you and I. We need the stable build. We need uh, no troubles at all. So you can see it's downloading and small little, uh, little download, 60 some meg. Well worth the, the, the price of admission there. We're gonna walk through this. Uh, we accept the agreement. I have read it for you, every word verbatim. You can trust me, it's good. I'm gonna put it in just the regular place. You'll notice that this goes in my app data folder and this means it's gonna be able to update itself automatically even if I'm not an administrator on the machine or, or any of those kind of things. A lot of programs are doing that now, but it does go in our local app data. We're just gonna call it Visual Studio Code here, nothing fancy. I do create the desktop thing. I do the open with code. 
I do register code as an editor for supported file types. You don't have to do any of those things, but I always, uh, I always do those and add to the path. Yep, that's what I told it to do. So now it's gonna install Peppy a little installer. And let's just go ahead and launch it. That was uh, no no fancy photography there. I didn't speed anything up. That's uh, that's actually what it uh, what it does. Okay, so um, this is VS Code. Looks pretty nice. I'm not going to do any of the data stuff because I'm going to destroy this VM as soon as we're done here. So it doesn't matter. Uh, one of the things that when you're using VS Code again, it's got a lot more bells and whistles than the ISE does. So there's some some things to get used to. Uh, you've got this bar over here on the left. And this right here has the extensions. So out of the box, VS Code is just a text editor. You can start a new file and you can, uh, you know, uh, type anything in here. It's a text editor. You'll notice at the bottom here, it, tell, it knows what kind of file this is. It's just a plain text file, but I could pick something else. I have to add support for PowerShell. So let's go ahead and do that right away. I'm going to close this because I don't care. Don't save it. I'm crazy like that. I'm gonna go over to the extensions over here, and there's a million of these. So if you do any other kind of work, I also play with Arduinos a little bit. There's an Arduino extension. There are uh, syntax prettifying, prettifying extensions, all kinds of things in here. Those are kind of advanced moves. Let's just worry about the PowerShell one. There are a few of those. I like the one from Microsoft. You can install whichever ones you want, uh, but, but starting out, let's stick with the one from Microsoft. You'll also know that there's a preview one. Again, for folks like you and I, we just need the stable one, and this is going to add all the PowerShell support that we care about, script analyzer, all those things. Uh, let's just go ahead and install that by clicking install right here. Installing. Now there are some themes, so you can use, uh, there's an ISE theme that makes it bright and all that, you can play with those. Uh, but it's installed. You'll see now that it uh, popped up a PowerShell window here at the bottom, and it says PowerShell integrated. Uh, there's package management in here for PowerShell. Uh, you can do that if you'd like. I always do. Let's go ahead and do that while we're uh, while we're sitting here. One thing I did not do on this VM is I did not install PowerShell 7. So it is just rocking the regular Windows PowerShell 5.2 or whatever comes out of the box. The good news is it doesn't matter. I can install PowerShell 7 before I do this. I can install PowerShell 7 after I do this. It all built, bolts in just fine. And VS Code is smart enough that it can handle a machine that has 5.2 and 7 installed on it. You'll get a different, uh, different drop down here if you've got multiples. So it's easy peasy. It doesn't matter which order you, you do it in. You can't, you can't screw that up. So now let's close this. Uh, let's close all this. And we don't care about that. So let's start a new uh, file right there. And I can say now, write host. So y'all were promised fancy syntax highlighting and all of that. This is clearly inferior to the ISE. So what we need to do is we need to go down here uh, and tell this where it says the language plain text. We need to tell it PowerShell. And if we do that, Voila, now it looks a lot better. So now we have right host. This is a test. It understands uh, the tab completion bits now. It understands all that so I can tab complete my parameters, all the fun things that I would wanna do inside of PowerShell. It now does all of those things. And if I save the, so let's say I put this back to plain text. If I don't remember to do that down there, Blah, very bad PowerShell editing experience. If I do file, save as. If I do uh, test.ps1, actually, if I pick PowerShell down, let's do that. Um, actually, let's, yeah, now that I've played it in, let's, uh, let's pick PowerShell from the list. But if we do that, that'll also update that, uh, that document type down there. Okay, so now, if I do it now, it's PowerShell. And again, that says 5.1. So if I had seven installed, I could do that here. Um, also, for your viewing pleasure, I'm gonna hold down the control key and hit the plus, and that zooms in a little bit, makes it a little easier for you. My eyes are getting old, so it's also um, helps me with that. So now we can see, we can open you know, PowerShell files from here. We can do file open. We've also got a file browser over here. So if we wanted to open a folder that had our scripts in it, we could do all that. Um, so it's a really a pretty 
good little interface for doing all these things. If you want to open that little thing at the bottom, I don't troubleshoot inside of the terminal window. I've just, I've never gotten in the habit, but you can do that here. You can do this new terminal and it will open up a PowerShell window down here. So I could also run PowerShell down here if I wanted to. If I'm writing a PowerShell script up here, you can see my test.ps1. I could be editing it up at the top and then running it at the bottom. Also, you have debugging in here. If you know enough about debugging, you can do that where you can step through your PowerShell command. It will run in the bottom, but you can put breakpoints in and see what variable names are, you know, what variable values, all that kind of stuff. I don't do a lot of that, uh, but that is also built right into all of this. So no excuse not to be writing your new PowerShell scripts inside of this. We got this set up in like 10 minutes. There was nothing to it. Uh, didn't sprain anything. No, no animals were hurt in the filming of this video. Easy stuff. Okay, so I promised I would get you up and going in PowerShell. I've done that. Promise number one uh, kept. Now I also talked about GitHub and getting set up in GitHub. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's look in here. There's also an extension for that. So let's do a search for the GitHub. We want this one, the GitHub pull requests and issues. That's the one that we want. And that is from the GitHub folks. That's how we know that it's true. And there's a bunch of other ones. I'm sure that uh, Matt Berner and his friends are well loved. Thomas Pink, everybody loves them. But we want the one for GitHub. So let's go ahead and do that. And now it's installed everywhere, so that's pretty cool. We've got some uh, extra things here on the side. So we can close all this out. I'm gonna close this terminal window because I'm not gonna do it. So now we have uh, GitHub. We don't have any of this in here. The value of GitHub is that we can pull our repositories, our repos down from GitHub onto our local machine and edit them and sync them up and all that. It's, it's a lot of steps when you're used to just editing a file and saving it, but I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's very much worth it. So how do we do all that? Well, normally we would go into source control and hit this clone repository, um, but it's not in there. We don't have the option to do that. Well, that's okay, because we've got this other way to do it. There is the um, command palette. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Contr I always do control shift P, I forgot where it was. So this is a place up here where you can give commands to VS Code as opposed to clicking whatever. Uh, so if I type get, uh, I can do that, and clone is the thing that I want to do, except clone's not showing up in here. Well, let's log into GitHub and see if um, see if that shows up anywhere. So let's go ahead and log into GitHub, and I'm going to sign in. I'm going to sign as, as myself. Now, I use two-factor auth with GitHub. Shame on you if you do not. I use the... Microsoft Authenticator app works pretty slick. I can't get logged into my phone right now. Oh my goodness, there we go. Apparently I have uh, somebody else's thumbs on my hands. Okay, so I'm logging into the Authenticator app and unlocking that. GitHub is giving me a code. Nobody write this code down. It's a secret code. I have to put the numlock on for that to work. Verify, okay. So here I am in GitHub, which is good. So I should be able to take one of my repos. Actually, I don't like that one. Uh, PowerShell, there we go. Something I set up about four years ago and probably forgot. So normally we would clone and we would use that URL, but we can't because we've got no way to do this. All right, so what's the problem? The problem is we've got this GitHub link over here, so let's poke around in there. We don't have any pull requests. We don't know what those are, doesn't matter. Um, sign into GitHub, yeah, let's do that. Let's sign into GitHub. Since my browser was already signed into GitHub, I'm already in, so it's saying, hey, do I wanna give Visual Studio access to GitHub? I do, I really do. Uh, so I'm good. It's gonna open up here. It's gonna try to install the extension we already have it. Uh, that's kind of how we got that as a chicken and the egg thing there. So what do we do? How do we, how do we clone things? How do we make this happen? Well, what we need to do, and the, the, the secret is right here, we need to install Git. So Git is the technology behind GitHub. It's the syncing thing. The extension that we installed lets Visual Studio talk to GitHub, but it needs those Git binaries on the machine itself. So let's install that. And this is going to say, do you really want to go to this external site and install Git? 
We do, I promise you that that URL is the right URL. And we're gonna go to Downloads and Windows, but you know, it's right here, so let's just install it right here. Download is starting. We're gonna open that file. This is a pretty simple one. I'm not gonna pretend that I know what all these things do, because uh, I'm not a developer, but, um, come back here, I thought I told you to start. Oh, there it is. Got away from me. Not responding. We'll, we'll take this out and post. All right, there we go. So it's uh, looking for an admin prompt. Good to go. Uh, stalling next. Yep, uh, default location's fine. I don't click anything here. I don't care if there's any links on the desktop. I never interact with Git, you know, directly, so it doesn't matter. Sure, put it in a folder called Git, I don't care. Uh, so I do, I, I think if you use the default one is fine, but there is uh, an option here for using Visual Studio Code as Git's default editor. That seems, you know, seems like a good idea given what we're trying to do. I let Git decide about branches. I won't completely uh, say that I understand that. I also um, let Git do the third party stuff. I don't care about that. Open SSL, sure, whatever. Windows style, I'm on Windows, that makes sense. Uh, uh, I'm going to use Windows Default Console Editor. Probably doesn't matter, uh, but I'm going to do that because I'm on Windows. Default for Git Pull and Rebase, no clue what any of that is. Uh, Git Credential Manager, sure, sounds good. File System Caching, yeah, I like that. Uh, there we go. So you can just take all the defaults and it's totally fine if you forget what any of these are. Just next, 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 finish like any good admin does. Works like a champ. Uh, don't sweat that. Patiently waiting. Uh, I don't care about the review notes. Honestly, Git, I appreciate your effort, but I don't really care. Uh, okay, so now what do we do? So again, we want to clone um, this, this right here. So we'll copy this URL. Let's see if we have any better luck now. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift P. Well, actually, I'll do it right here. Show the command palette. Git. Clone is still not there. I wonder if I have to shut down Visual Studio Code and open it back up. Let's try that. A good cleansing restart of code. That gives me an opportunity to show you. I also always do this. I do that uh, and I pin it to start because I use code all the time now. It's my friend. Okay, so now, oh, clone repository, look at that. Okay, and just to show you the thing that I was trying to do before was get clone, there we go. All right, so let's do this. Let's clone the repository, provide the URL. So that was this URL to github.com slash Todd Clint, blah, blah, blah. Let's do that. It's gonna ask us where to save this. So what I do uh, is I make a, a folder called code and I just save all my repos there. Now, this is good. Again, this is all being synced to the cloud, so you don't want to put this in like OneDrive or anything and get two syncing engines syncing it. I also put this in a directory, and then as I'm working on PowerShell modules and things like that, I can add that directory, that code directory, to my PS module path, and it makes it a little easier for me to install the modules and tests that I'm working on. So I want to select the root, the code. I don't want to make a folder for the repository itself. Uh, so it's doing that. So let's open that cloned repository. So these are the files that are in it. And if you look here, it's exactly the same as the files that are all over here. So that's what happened there. If we look on the file system, we will look uh, inside of documents. So where did I put that now? I've lost code already. Goodness. That's why I can't have nice things. So where did I put that? I thought I put it. Did it put it in? Oh, don't put it in there. And I thought, sure, I put that in documents. Oh, there it is, okay. Uh, so this is the name of the repo, and, and lesson there, pay better attention to where you put your code directory. Um, this is the name of the repo, so it's straight, that PowerShell is straight out of that right there. 
and these files are right here. So while we're using Visual Studio Code to edit these files, you can honestly just do it anywhere, uh, and then you just need something to you know put them back up into Git. But we'll use uh, code because that's what we're doing. So we will do this, create users. It knows it's a PS1 file, so it's starting a PowerShell down here. Gears are whirring, all that kind of stuff. Uh, started this terminal. Again, I don't ever use the terminal. I don't really have anything to change in this file. Uh, so I'll just do this. Blog post. Yay. All right. So I've got this file. I got the little dot there that tells me that I haven't saved it. So let's save it. So I got the X. Now what that did is that saved it out here. So you can see that that's uh, just been updated here recently, but it hasn't saved it out here. So still two years ago, long time for that code to be sitting. So what do we have to do to get it out to GitHub? Well, you can see something over here is looking for our attention. So let's see that. This tells me this is my source control. This tells me that this file has changed. And if I want to sync it up, I want to stage these changes. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. If I have multiple files that I've changed, it will show there. I have to put a message, a uh, short little thing. I don't remember, not very many characters. Uh, so I'm just going to say updated file. And then I hit this plus or this check mark to commit it to the changes that I'm making. There's about 16 steps. Um, that you have to do. And it says I need to set my Git username and Git email address. So let's do that. Okay. So this is something that you have to do once. And it says, hey, uh, tell us who you are. And this is the, the thing right here. So let's copy that out. And there was another place to do this. Um, so actually, let's do Git. I don't know if I can do it here or not. Let's do it over here. Get, and I've already forgotten what I needed to type. So let's put that in here. Okay, get global that. So get config, say Todd at clint.org. All right, no error messages. Good for me. And then my name is Todd Clint. Hi, Todd. Let's do that and put that in there. Um, okay, so now I've, I've told Git, and again, this is just, this isn't authentication. Obviously, I didn't put any passwords or anything like that in, but Git just wants to know who you are. So now let's try to stay, uh, commit these changes again. Much happier Git. We still have one more step. So we had to save the file. Then we had to stage the file. Then we have to commit the file and put your email address and all that stuff in one time. The last step is down here. We have to push them up to Git. And again, if I come over here one more time, refresh this page, uh, everything's two years old. So now if I click this arrow up here, uh, it's gonna say, do you really wanna do the thing with the thing? Oh yeah, I certainly do. So there's much whirring, things are spinning, you know, dials are moving. And in a minute, <laughs> It uh, wants to sign in here. Okay. And again, that's a one-time deal. So now, um, we'll talk about that in a second. Now we see there's zeros down here, so everything's synced up. This is saying, do we want to run a git fetch periodically? So again, this is up in the cloud, so other people could conceivably be changing this, or we could be changing it in the cloud or on another machine. And so this is saying, do you want me to just periodically go check and see if there's anything new in the background? I'm going to say no. If you say no, you can always just come down here anytime and click it and uh, see if there's anything new. So now we're going to come up here uh, and check this repository again two years ago, five years ago. If we refresh one minute ago, and if we click this file, we can see it has that text right there. So now it's up in the cloud, and now if we wanted to roll back and pull that line out, we could because it's all in source control. We can share it with other people. This one's you know out there publicly shared, so you're welcome to do that. Uh, but now you'll always be able to get these, these files. Now, there's one other thing that I want to show you that is just tangentially uh, related to this, is I recently saw there's a great way you can muck around in here and it's, it's kind of ugly, especially if you're not used to it. But once you get into the GitHub you know, frame of mind, you can open up a GitHub project in VS Code in one second. And that is by putting one S at the end of GitHub in the domain name of your repo and hit OK. 
This is in your browser, but it is a GitHub, a VS Code representation inside of here. So we can look at files. I prefer this view when looking at PowerShell in GitHub before I sync something down. Um, so that is uh, that is one cool trick that I learned. And again, you can you can get in here. Um, so I like all that. There's other, a whole bunch of crazy things you can do, but I just wanted to tell you about the 1S. You can get there in one second. Okay, so that is, that is everything. So in this quick demo in the last 25 minutes, we have installed VS Code. We have configured it for PowerShell to make it our PowerShell editor of choice. And then because we're all super smart and good looking uh, and can dance like uh, Fred Astaire, we also wired that all up to GitHub. So now we can do proper source control, share our files with our friends and all that kind of thing. So again, if you want to see this, I'll, I'll blog this here in a couple of days. Go to toddclint.com slash posh VS code, and I'll walk you through this process. Leave comments if you'd like them. I would love to hear if this was helpful. Uh, and if, there, you know, if you want other, other videos like this, let me know. Thanks.